All right, I'm just going to give a quick run through of some of the new things that have been added to Radium and Soundminer in the last couple of months. Um, so we'll start off with spectrograms. So if you go up here, you can see the spectrograms. And in plus, you would just right click and you can call up that column. Um, so now, if you're interested in all this kind of stuff, you can use the pre-release versions. If you toggle that on and then relaunch, if there's a new version, it will prompt you to download. So uh, let's go and call up Radium here. So there's now eight slots. And if you load up any old presets, it will append uh, the extra two slots at the end before the old versions used to cap out at six. So I've decided to up it to eight. Uh, that'll become a bit clearer later on, and you'll see why. So if you're kind of new to Radium, one of the first things you probably want to do is set the load MIDI controller number. So I'm going to put it on this button right here. So it's number 109. So what that just means is that it doesn't matter what slot I'm in. So this is like slot one, slot two. If I'm in the main browser of Soundminer and I click a sound or a portion of a sound, I don't have to figure, you know, go to sampler and load into slot one or make sure I'm in the right one. It's so whatever slide I'm in, I hit the load button and it goes. If I'm on slot two, hit the load button, there it goes. So that's one of the first things I like to do. So anyway, we'll clear all the slots. Let's take this sound. I'm going to take a portion of the sound. We'll load that in. There we are. So now it's mapped on the keyboard. And we're going to want to do some kind of fun things with it. So thanks to Sean Gallagher, I'm using this Rolly dashboard here. And you kind of want it in XYZ mode at this point. So if I went and edit this, I could see the CC numbers that it's putting out, which is 113 for the X direction, 114 for the Y, and 115 for the press down. So back here we go. Let's call up a plugin. Um, this is kind of neat as well. There's now all these categories. And to sort of edit those categories, you would call up the VST plugin rack, and there's an option to tag plugins. And you just basically go through them all and you find something that you like, and if you right click, you can assign it to a, a specific category or multiple categories. Uh, so I've gone through and put things in my favorites, uh, whether they're the pitch delays and all that kind of stuff. And every time you open up the plugin, it takes a little screenshot or a snapshot of the plugin. And that just means that when you go and choose it, so I'll go to plugin A, I'll go to say my favorites, you can see there's little screenshots of them all. Um, so I'm gonna say manipulator, and we'll just play the sound. We'll figure out, you know, octave-wise where we want it. A bit low. There we go. Anyway, I could be, you know, adjusting these things, or I could do it all live. So let's let's integrate this thing. So up here is is your principal or your main MIDI controller. So this is this Novation here. And I'm going to choose my secondary device is this light pad block. So then I'm going to say, okay, modulation number 113 is going to go to plugin A, macro one. So that just means that when I move my X direction, there's macro one. And then we'll go 114, which was the next number for the Y, is going to go up to plugin A. There we go. So now I've got both of them. So now I want to map them into the actual plugin up here. The easiest way is to move one of the parameters, right click, and it's up at the top here. So there's the pitch, and we'll do, let's move it, and then go harmonics. So now I've got X and Y. So now I can do things, but it's not sounding quite right. And why isn't it sounding right? Well, some plugins, like this one, and the elastic uh, pitch, actually take the MIDI input that comes into the, into the plugin. Uh, so sometimes that's cool, you know, if you're using something like Serum, you're going to want the MIDI to actually trigger the sounds that are inside it. But for this case, I don't want it to be tracking what note that I'm actually playing on the keyboard. Um, so there's a little icon down here, toggle that off, and it will no longer be sending MIDI into the plugin. So there we go. So now I'm able to control those two. Anyway, so I find something that I like. Okay, let's say that's cool. Wicked. Now let's move on to slot two. Now, 
Uh, let's go, what should we do? Let's go elephants in the room. I've got another one here somewhere. Quincy, I think his name was. Yeah, Quincy. <laughs> Quincy's cool. Okay. So this is from Brett John's um, library, Elephants in the Room. And the the Grey Parrot was from Thomas Rex Beverly's Grey Parrot series. I'll just give a little shout out to users here. Anyway, so I'll load this one in. So now I've got um, the elephants and the parrot, and they're both going to play when I hit this note. So obviously I can, because I'm pitched down on my octave, I probably want to make this normal. <laughs> And then I'll pitch down this slot. I can solo it. Okay. Trim us our uh, start points on our elephant a little bit. Anyway, so that's that's kind of cool. One another new thing that's added is the ability to use envelopes. So what envelope one is going to do is take a pre-fader of the output of this slot, and it'll be somewhere that I can uh, assign to a destination. So if I wanted to do like a really rudimentary sort of envelope follower, I would set it to the master volume on this rack, on this rack or this slot. So I'm going to mute it, and when I hit play, you can see it's following along with the envelope of the gray parrot. So you can see it's kind of jittering a little bit there, so you'd want to use something like the glide factor, which just kind of smooths things out. And then this is new, this is a multiplier. So by if I double click on it, it'll be one time, so it's basically just going to follow the, the RMS value or the average um, volume of this slot and apply it to this master fader. But if I use the multiplier, I can sort of just crank everything up. So now those two together, Sort of sound like that. So if I bypass it, I'll go get the sound back up. There we are. So now I can still be adjusting my pitch modulator on slot one with this controller. But another fun thing you can do is now say, I only want this sound to be triggered on my main controller, and I want this one to be triggered on my secondary MIDI controller. Now I'm going to have to launch the Roly app here to swap my modes. You have to go to apps, go to my note grid. So now it's actually going to be outputting like MIDI notes. It won't be doing an XY anymore, which means my pitch manipulator isn't going to be working, but it's okay. It's whatever settings it was currently at. Actually, I want to call it up and just have a, a quick look here. Yeah, I'll just crank those harmonics there. So we'll do that. So you can see when I hit the parrot, the elephant isn't playing because it doesn't have a trigger. So now I can sort of offset things. I could play them together. I could pitch the elephant, elephant down a little bit. Up. I could do uh, like a chord for the elephant on the elephant. Anyway, so that's all kind of fun stuff to be able to do that. If I turn off my envelope, you can just see that I can <laughs> trigger my elephant, and there's my parrot on this keyboard. So then I could, you know, I could have like a little growl or something go on just after the main roar. You know, all those kind of things. Now, you could do that before by like adjusting like this delay parameter here, which allows you to sort of offset one slot to another, but I think that's a, a much better way of doing it. Okay, so that's happened. Um, what else? Let's load up uh, maybe some gunshots from Frank Bree. Here we go, this will do. So I'll just take this sound. I'm gonna clear out my rack. Load this bullet in, start it up. There we go. So that's great. Now, you know, I wanna be able to uh, re-trigger it, say. So I wanna be able to hold, hold a note down and have it like retrigger over and over and over again. Now I could go forward looping, adjust my uh, start and stop points. Oh, got a little graphic problem there. Fix that. 
So that works, but you know, you don't really have a frequency of, of how it re-triggers. So I'm just going to turn this back off. That's my sound. So there's a new thing here now called an emitter. If I just assign this to the start point, you'll see it's basically a sawtooth wave that just is constantly emitting. And I can adjust the frequency or how fast it emits by adjusting this parameter here. Anyway, so what we're going to do is assign it to the current sound re-trigger. And if I move my stop point, So there you go, you've got a little re-trigger source. One of the things I want to add in there is sort of a, a jitter uh, parameter to be able to sort of randomize it a little bit so it doesn't sound quite so mechanical. Um, some of the other things that have happened is there's now, this has all been kind of cleaned up and compacted a little bit. So it's a, you know, you can see more things on screen at once. And um, one of the things I noticed with this light pad is I like it, but it does kind of jump around a little bit. And I'll show you what I mean here. So I'll go back to XYZ. And we'll just create a new modulation source, 113. We'll send it to plugin A, macro 1. And we'll call up uh, the fab filter. It's one of my favorites here. Where is it? D3. So I'll add a point. I'll move it. And that way, it's now band 1 frequency. So there we go. So it's, now it's mapped. So if I push really hard on the light pad, or even reasonably hard, you can see it's kind of smooth, kind of jumps around a little bit. All kind of depends on, how, on my temperature of my finger as well. Anyway, so there's a new little icon here, which will turn on smoothing. It just means you'll be able to see it actually a lot better if I just, if I turn smoothing off and I'll just click on points, you can see how it instantly jumps. I turn the smoothing on, it kind of glides a little bit. It's very subtle, but it's enough that it is going to make a difference. Anyway, I think that's it. So I'm going to start building all these different versions. And uh, like I said, if you go to pre-release and the preferences, you'll be able to get the version when it's ready.